Now, let me first get your take on the humanitarian situation in Gaza. It's been almost a year since the conflict began, and Israel has bombed areas, including UN schools, turned into shelters, supposed to be designated safe havens. How dire is the situation facing the UN and other aid agencies helping Palestine? It's, as you say, almost a year uh, since the start of this war. Uh, we've seen six schools uh, that have been turned to shelters bombed uh, just in the last week. So uh, not only are they continuing to be bombed, uh, but there's a, a pace that's been increased in that. You've heard us say before that there is no safe place in Gaza. This is continuing. We, we almost now to 42,000 dead. We're slowly coming to 100,000 injured. Uh, these are tragic numbers. Um, they continue to creep up without any kind of uh, ceasefire optimism uh, really uh, in our short future. Um, the situation is quite grim. We are now at this catastrophic phase that we've, we've, um, we've warned the world about. Um, people uh, live in tents uh, in the cold now at night um, and they continue to not really be sure whether they're going to wake up alive in the morning. Um, you walk around or you drive around, there's puddles of water everywhere, um, there's sewage, uh, and we're even seeing that the supplies that come in are so few that if we give someone a tent, they'll sell it to get food and then they still need a tent. So <clears throat> the people are in this terrible situation where they don't know if they're going to feed their family or keep them warm. Uh, and certainly there is no chance for them to keep them safe. Um, our major issue is a lack of supply. Um, we have to winterize. We don't have this supply line that we need. Um, we can't really help people and we certainly can't give them the hope that they need. Um, with the dwindling supplies, especially for the winter. At current rates of supply, it would take us more than three years uh, to ensure that everyone that needs uh, to be prepared for winter will be prepared for this winter. We've called for more crossings, we've called for more supplies, but without a political decision uh, for the Israelis, this isn't something that we think is going to happen in time to make sure that people uh, are prepared for what's coming ahead of us. Yeah, as winter approaching, things are going to be more difficult for the people living there. And reports also say food supplies to Gaza have fallen sharply in recent weeks because Israeli authorities have introduced a new customs rule on some humanitarian aid. What have you heard about this rule and how is Gaza coping? This is not the first time that, that uh, war is brought to Gaza. Um, in the last escalations of conflict, what we saw was that um, the amount of products, uh, humanitarian, private sector, that were allowed to enter Gaza during that time of conflict for the weeks or months that it took were actually escalated. Um, this is something normal for humanitarian aid. The amount of humanitarian supplies certainly that are coming into Gaza should be commensurate with the humanitarian needs. There should be a free flow of supplies. This can be food, it can be medicine, uh, it can be hospital beds if you need to uh, you know, staff up or to um, rebuild a hospital. That is not the case in Gaza. It's not been the case since the first day of this war. Uh, and what we're seeing in the uh, last few weeks is increasing uh, demands put on our supply line and humanitarian importation, not only in the amount, but on the customs, on the uh, regulations and the rules. Um, the yes, this is a new rule that's been put in place. Uh, I also want to underline here that what people in Gaza eat is not just the food that we bring from uh, the UN and NGOs. They also rely heavily on the private sector that um, is able to bring them the things that we cannot, uh, fresh food, sundry items, shampoo, the things that you need to basically be uh, well-fed, um, hygienic, clean, and, and to live your life in the best way that you can in a dignified manner. Without both the humanitarian and the private sector supply lines, uh, what we're seeing is uh, a lot more desperation, certainly misery, uh, and we're going to have, um, I think, some bad news uh, in the next time that we have snapshots around um, the hunger and malnutrition situation uh, in Gaza. The humanitarian needs are not food and water. Um, the humanitarian needs range from mental health. For example, there are people in Gaza Strip that have serious mental health issues. They need access to advanced mental health uh, medicine, psychotropic medicine. These are not sustainably available. Uh, some of these people um, have taken their own life. Uh, some of these people are a danger to others. The system cannot cope <clears throat> with this individual anymore. Um, there are families that have lost their loved ones. There are unaccompanied children, almost 20,000, and people that need to get out. So we're talking about medical evacuations. We're talking about advanced medical care, oncological care. None of this is something that we today, as the United Nations, can say 
is being tackled to the extent that it should be. And if the conflict ends soon, how long do you think it'll take for Palestine to rebuild and restore life as it was before last October? How much will it cost? I think the best people to answer that have been the Palestinians that live in Gaza themselves. And most of them, when I ask them, tell me that you know, Gaza will never be the same. When I look outside my window, I don't think it can be the same. Um, many places that we've seen have war. I think the, the answer, the hope, is that you, you build back something even better than what you had. Um, probably to physically rebuild Gaza uh, with the resilience and hope that you see every day, it's only a, it's, it's a uh, mathematical equation of time and money, as it usually is. Uh, but to rebuild a society and an economy and a, a culture, that takes a little bit longer, as we all know. Um, and the rebuilding is not just the physical aspects of schools, uh, hospitals, universities, and, and homes, but it's to rebuild uh, and to plan for and to repair the damage that's going to be done to children that may be out of school for almost two years, uh, to families that have been completely decimated, they've had loved ones killed, um, an agricultural uh, system uh, that, which used to be lively, which is on its knees, uh, fisheries that are destroyed, uh, unemployment that is almost complete now. Um, you know, you have to understand that at this point, we don't even have the ability to bring cash into Gaza. So whatever you have can't really move around in the market. So um, thousands of children will not be able to rebuild their lives because they don't have any legs or arms. They've been blown off. They are the, the most uh, significant and tragic uh, victims of this war. So rebuilding Gaza, I think, um, is an easy question with a very complicated answer. I can tell you that the United Nations and partners, as we do, are already working with, uh, with uh, donors and member states on an early recovery plan and then development plans. Um, but that's all going to have to be in the air until we understand exactly what the intentions and the political will is around, not just a ceasefire, but stopping you know, the, 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 the daily tragedy of the people in Gaza uh, and seeing how long it's going to take for them to stop uh, being under fire and how long it's going to take for the hostages to be sent back to their families that have now also spent a year waiting with no word uh, for hundreds of people that should be uh, in the safe arms of their families. So until those two things come to play, um, we're not going to have an answer of how long it's going to take to rebuild Gaza. Uh, and I think the last thing that I'll say on that is that um, my hope and our hope is that Whatever that rebuilding takes, the planning includes the people of Gaza, uh, how they want uh, to see uh, their uh, land look and how they want it to be run uh, and what they want their future to look like. Mr. Georgios Petropoulos, thank you so much for taking the time talking to us. We appreciate the work you and your team have been doing and continue to do in Gaza. Do take care out there. Appreciate it. Thanks for your interest. Good to talk to you.